we're getting quite a lot of patient inquiries about what the symptoms and signs of deep vein thrombosis would be and what people need to look out for and be worried about. Deep vein thrombosis, for the most part, people are going to notice swelling in a leg. So maybe both legs, but that's very unusual. So normally it's one leg. And normally they'll notice swelling or pain or discomfort in their calf. And oftentimes that will be written off as a muscle injury or muscle strain. Uh, and that's where we see the most misdiagnosis. Somebody goes to their GP and they say, oh, this is probably just a strained muscle and they don't do anything. So if you've got unexplained swelling or pain in your calf and you haven't done something that would have caused you to have a muscle injury, that's the most common sign to look out for. Then you might notice some people if they've got that plus they've suddenly developed a cough or a bit of chest pain and they've got a little bit of calf pain, then you've got to worry about DVT and obviously a blood clot going going to the lungs, which would be pulmonary embolus. Worst cases are people with a swollen whole leg, if their whole leg is swelling and it's progressively getting worse. Uh, that implies a more extensive DVT, but that's the, the least common presentation. Is there anything else that might have happened to the patients that might have brought on the DVT that they might be concerned about? What are the commonest things? Well, I, you know, that's, that's, I guess, taking those symptoms in, in combination with what risk factors there are for DVT. So if all these symptoms or these problems you encounter have started after something like a long-haul flight, or you've been very dehydrated and you've been sick for a bit of time, or you've just been in hospital and had any kind of hospital admission, but especially a surgical procedure, or in the case of women, you may have just started the oral contraceptive pill, or you have a family history of blood clots, that should heighten your suspicion that what you've developed in your leg is in fact a blood clot and not something else that, that's going on or occurring. A lot of the concern at the moment is with coronavirus and people's worry about going to the emergency department or an emergency visit to their GP. What would you advise? Would you say that if they had calf swelling and pain and some history of the things you've just mentioned that they should go to a &E? I think this applies to this uh, health condition and any other concerns that people may have. I mean, we have to, yes, coronavirus is around us, but if you go to hospital with appropriate protection in the form of a mask and are socially distancing when you go there. Most hospitals now are very well organized around protecting patients who are coming in on, on safe pathways to minimize your risk of COVID. So I think the main mistake that people are making across the board, whether it be DVT or anything else at the moment, is being scared of hospital. If you've got a problem, you're far better off getting it sorted out than waiting and your risk of catching COVID is probably extremely low, particularly now. It might get slightly higher as we as we progress into winter, but even then, if you follow proper advice and protect yourself with face masks and particularly washing your hands and not touching your face, your chances of getting COVID are probably very low and your risk of not getting something sorted out is high. So I would always advise anyone who's concerned to contact their GP, go to their A&E and get, uh, get a DVT sorted out. You know, ultimately, if you miss it, the worst case scenario, you get a pulmonary embolus that can also be fatal. So you're better getting started on treatment than missing that opportunity. And so when they do go to hospital, if they do are found to have a deep vein thrombosis, what treatment is available nowadays? So nowadays, treatment has become so much simpler and, and more straightforward for most people. We've got all the new drugs that are available for treating blood clots, uh, which are called direct oral anticoagulants or DOACs. And these are tablets that you can take, uh, depending on which one you get started, either one, one or two a day. Normally, you start off on a dose of twice a day when you first have a blood clot for a few weeks. The combination of these tablets mean that it's a very simple thing to start, to thin your blood to prevent any complications from the blood clot. Uh, there is some evidence that these newer tablets also help to break blood clot up, which is not something that the older treatments, particularly warfarin, used to do. The newer tablets also don't interact with other drugs and food and so forth in the same way that Warfarin did. They're much easier to start taking and their complication rate or particularly the bleeding risk from being on a blood thinner is much, much lower than we saw in the past. So actually with very simple and pretty safe treatment options that you can start virtually on the day, if you do have a blood clot and you get onto treatment very quickly, you are likely to have a very good outcome. So if it's 
if the blood clot sits in your car, for example, 90% of people who start treatment will need nothing else than tablets for probably as little as six weeks, but normally up to six months to treat their blood clot. And is there anything else they should be doing apart from taking anticoagulant? The evidence on, on additional things like compression stockings is, is a bit mixed, but in my opinion, and certainly that of, of a number of my peers, if you have a blood clot and you get into compression stockings early and you wear them properly and they're properly fitted, then they will likely help your symptoms. In particular, they help reduce swelling in your leg. You only need to wear stockings up to your knee. Uh, after six months after the original blood clot, stockings really don't make that much difference. So it's only an early thing. And luckily we're going into winter now, so stockings are less uncomfortable than they are uh, in the summer when it gets a bit hot. But the combination of, of the blood thinners and stockings is certainly helpful, particularly if you're going to go on a flight or travel, uh, it's less likely for most people now. And then keeping well hydrated is important. Um, you know, that's one of the risk factors is dehydration. Uh, and then trying to identify whether there were any particular risk factors that you encountered for your causing your DVT in the first place. If those uh, risk factors can be identified and eliminated, that will also help to, to reduce the risk of recurrence. If you get sent home from the emergency department with a DVT and you're on anticoagulants, is it good for the patients to elevate their leg at home or is it, are they allowed to exercise? What advice would you give people about mobilising and resting? It's a, a really good question about what to do when you go home. And it's one of these things that in treating patients with DVT has been caught up in a lot of myth and uh, incorrect information. So in the olden days, we used to uh, elevate people, uh, put them in a hospital bed and elevate their leg for a couple of hours or days and not let people move about because you were worried about them. Whereas now we'll actually put patients actively in compression stockings and sort of compression pumps on their legs to start getting flow moving through the leg and actively encourage early mobilization. And there's some very good data from publications to show that the earlier you mobilize after a DVT, the better your outcome. So I would encourage any patient who got a blood clot to try and get back to exercise as quickly as possible. Start moving, getting your calf muscles working, getting all that exercise going, and that will be a, a much more helpful strategy. Of course, if your leg is swollen at the end of the day, then elevating it to get the swelling down is useful. And that's why if you wear uh, compression stockings, the best thing to do is get the stockings on first thing in the morning. That will control the swelling during the day. Take them off at night when you're sleeping, which will be helpful. And then at night, just before you go to bed, get good moisturizing cream in your leg. And the combination of moisturising cream and the stockings and exercise will help your recovery be much, much quicker. In short, you're saying if somebody's got a painful, swollen cough, they shouldn't hesitate. They should go to A&E. There are safe treatments. They are likely to be sent home and they should mobilise as much as possible to improve their outcomes. That is the short version of it. If you think you've got a problem, go to a hospital, get checked out, get on the right treatment and you'll do well. Don't sit at home wondering.